What's up YouTube? Um, today I want to do a quick tutorial on the headphones breakdown uh, chord effect. It's basically this section here. We're going to create a chord that travels along the spline and it kind of flaps shut at the end. And uh, also create something similar to run along the middle of it. Uh, like this thing here. Um, so basically, in 15 minutes, I'm going to recreate this. I'll run you from my scene file. Uh, I'm using a uh, sweep nerves, so it's quite slow. I'll just turn that off. This is a scene file, and uh, I did a quick render. It's not identical, but you can use these techniques to create something that's very similar. So, um, just quickly explain the scene. The scene is just scene objects. The path is the path it travels, the spline it travels along. Flaps is the outer casing, and inner wires is basically the tracer object, this, uh, this section here. So, this isn't actually too difficult. It's um, I'm just using a sphere as a guide. I'm I'm using the tracer object to um, emit tracer vertices of the sphere, and as you can see, I added a bit, added a little bit of espresso uh, to make it rotate with time. And then um, it's aligned to the same spline, and it, it um, I just animate the position, and it's tangential, so it's basically the front faces the tangent of the spline. And um, once you choose tangential, you can only rotate along the I think it's pitch. And that's why I used espresso. Sorry, the bank. Um, anyway, the main bit is the flaps. And the flaps, I'll just quickly run through it. I've got an arc, the arc's extruded. The bend, we used to create the bend on the flap at the very tip. So we're bending the arc segment. We then clone that six times radially, and we use a spline wrap on the cloner to make it travel, wrap along the spline. So that's the technique. I'll just leave that open if you want to study it quickly. But um, just check the time. Three minutes. Okay. I'm going to create. I'm just going to recreate the scene. I'm going to move through this quite quick because. I assume uh, if you're if you're doing a tutorial like this one, you're al already quite advanced. So um, I'm not going to waste time explaining every s little thing. But uh, I'll just turn the grid back on. Okay. So create um, an arc. Put it into ring mode, so we get a cross section of an arc. And uh, we can use, we can adjust here the star angle and the end angle. Um, can adjust the f uh, inner radius. So basically, that's the thickness. And, um, the values I used was uh, minus 30 star angle to 30 end angle, which means that's a 60 degree segment. Which means if you clone this six times, you'll get a circle. Um, I then rotated this. 90 degrees, so it's just moving, it's aligned to the top. Uh, so we've got, our, we've got the arc segment, uh, we extrude this. I was using a uh, sweep nerves, but uh, the res I didn't get good results with sweep nerves. In the end, I just ended up using extrude nerves, nice and simple. Uh, drop the arc underneath the extrude nerves. Uh, we can adjust the length now. I'm just going to create a 
a chunk that we can use. Not too long, not too short. Just a nice length of, um, nice kind of length. Uh, increase the subdivisions, 16, maybe make it 32, like that. So now we got this, and if we were to clone this, if we clone this uh, radially, we basically, six clones, we get like a nice uh, piece of tubing, perfect fit. So um, before we move to that stage, we just want to add in the bend deformer. So go to deformers bend, and it's not facing the right way, so I'm just going to rotate this, holding down shift, 90 degrees, rotate it, hold down shift, 90 degrees, so that's facing the right way now. Um, just move it back. Now, we can't drop this bend deformer in the extrude nerves, it's just going to break. So what we need to do is select them both and hit Alt G to group them in the same null. And uh, now the bend deformer will affect the extrude nerves, even though it's not a child, as long as they're in the same null in the same hierarchy. Uh, that's how it works. So now we can adjust the bend and control the tip. This is our two ways you can do it. You can uh, animate the strength or you can actually just pull this off. But um, I think personally I prefer it, prefer animating the bend strength. Okay, so now we've got this section. Uh, choose the whoops choose a null object and hold down alt add in a cloner makes it a child again choose radial 6 and then we I'm just gonna roughly eyeball this so it's um, I think about there we've got this piece of uh, tubing and uh, I'm just going to hide the bend deformer, it's still active, I'm just going to hide the box. Now we can animate this end opening and closing using the bend deformer strength. So that's great. And then the next stage, now we've got the cloner, we want to spline wrap this cloner. So I'm just going to quickly create a spline that can move along. I'll use a B spline. Just create a couple of points, nothing fancy. I'll just make sure this end that's facing the camera is a bit extreme here. Something like that. Uh, it's not great, but. So again, um, well, add the spline wrap. Again, we can't drop in. The, we can't drop the spline wrap in the cloner. So what we do is select them both and hit Alt G, put them in the same null. So now this will work. The only thing left is to put the spline and the spline wrap in the spline box, and it's gone crazy. This is uh, to do with the axis. We want to choose plus Z. And uh, now it's moving in the right axis, and but we've got a problem with the there's not enough subdivisions. So we go back to the extrude nerves object and add in say about 300. Subdivisions. Wait, something's broken. This is weird. This is very strange. Oh, sorry. We want to keep length. <laughs> we get to kind of keep the segment. So yeah, sorry, I did it the wrong way around. Um, here we can increase the length. Oops. Add 5,000. Now it's looking better. Maybe make that a node six thousand. 
and what we can do is we can animate the offset so now we basically we've got the animation working it's moving along the spline so it's just a ma matter of animating this here you can add a keyframe keyframe and then as it's getting to the end you can animate the strength off which will cause it to flap shut so animate the strength from 90 to 0 whatever so that's that and um, I've got five minutes so I can quickly show the I'll just turn this off quickly um, for the inner bit if you just create a sphere um, align to spline again we drop in the spline choose tangential so it's facing the direction of the spline as it travels along the sphere probably only uh, want four segments that's enough and then we want to create a tracer object and then sweep nerves so drop the tracer and sweep nerves its reference in the sphere trace paths trace vertices very important uh, not really changing any settings obviously the sweep nerves needs a cross section so you can add in a circle put that there um, so it would have to animate the sphere so control add a keyframe there I don't know add a keyframe here so this thing's traveling along and whoops the sweet nerves kicked in circles way too thick you can choose three actually you want it quite thick um, I'm just going to move these keyframes back to zero so if I play this it's basically generating splines behind it and to make these splines sort of wrap around each other we just uh, animate the rotation, the bank so um, I used Expresso but I I think I was having problems manually. Wanted to rotate a few times. Yeah, it's problems animating it manually. So I used Expresso here. As you can see, it's kind of rotating a little bit, but uh, I don't think I've got enough time. Actually, maybe I do. I'll just very quickly. The Expresso is if you just drop in a Expresso tag. Uh, we want to. Time sphere the global rotation bank and then uh, I use the math node so whatever the frame time it is you can multiply this by say multiply the time by 20 and that drives the rotation of this so whoops too many coils uh, so you can adjust the espresso it's just multiplying the number of frames uh, actually I think the time value is like a float but it's usually quite a small value so I usually multiply it to kind of basically uh, enhance the kind of value multiply it and, uh, until you're happy and then you can hide the sphere obviously you want to add a few more subdivisions in there but that's the kind of effect that's how I created that but uh, so yeah sorry I went for it really quick but um, I hope you learned something those are the techniques and then I'll leave the rest to you to kind of combine the two